Hello everybody, I'm Chuck Weger, Area State Senator, and today I'm very pleased to have as my guest, Eileen Herr. She's a new Board of Regent for the University of Minnesota. Congratulations. Yes, well thank you so much, Senator Weger, and thank you so much for your support, and I appreciate it. Well, you're <laughs> welcome, and uh, Eileen also lives in Maplewood, yes. and not too far from myself, and so mm -hmm. it's nice to have someone uh, in our area serving on the board, so. Yes. Well, no, I'm very proud to represent the people of Maplewood. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and in addition to the Maplewood, though, you'll actually be representing the people of Minnesota. Yes, I'm an at-large representative. So, um, of course, I live in Maplewood, and that's the community that I know. Um, that, that my friends and family are there. But I will seek very hard to represent all of Minnesota okay. and get out there and be as present um, and as uh, representative as I can be. Good. Well, yeah. we'll talk more about the <laughs> Board of Regents and those significant responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But uh, first, share with the viewers uh, about yourself. Tell us about your journey. Where were you born? And uh, you know, just the highlights of uh, how you got to where you're at today. Yes. Well, I was born in Laos. Um, I'm Hmong background. Mm -hmm. um, and I was born in the midst of war um, and um, struggle in Southeast Asia at 1969, so that was in the middle of the Vietnam War, yes. America's effort in that area. And uh, my uh, Hmong family uh, was very involved in that um, war effort, uh, being, uh, re being recruited by the uh, CIA, not the U.S. government, but the Central Intelligence Agency as, uh, as Your operatives. Family. Yep, my yes. family, my clan, um, my family members. Um, and so uh, all my uncles, um, my relatives, my male relatives were involved in that secret war effort. Yes. And when the Vietnam War was over, when America left, um, the Hmong faced persecution by the Lao government for being uh, an ally to the U.S. government. Because at that time in Laos too, there was a struggle between democracy or communism and communism won over in Southeast Asia, in yes. Vietnam and in Laos. And so, um, it became a dangerous place for Hmong people because we were America's closest ally in yes. Laos. Yes. So, um, so we were forced to yeah, flee. America's yeah, America's closest ally. Yes, it is. Yes, we were, and we st we still are. I mean, we yes. love Americans. Um, think of um, Americans as really good friends yes. of ours. Um, so, because of that um, experience, we had to flee. Um, so, we were never migrants. We never came to America looking for a better place, but we fled for safety and security yes. uh, for our lives. Survival. Yes, for survival. Yep. Yep. Can you imagine, your know, <laughs> viewers, if you had to flee yes. where you were born, where you were raised, but then to flee mm -hmm. for survival if it was across the globe. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's your life story. Yes, that's my life story, yes. And the great news is that, you know, of course, America right now has its political turmoils, but the heart of America, I think, is good, is yeah. giving, is kind. Um, so um, we were refugees, and a Lutheran church in Iowa um, uh, resettled us um, as part of a refugee resettlement program. Where was the Lutheran church? Um, in Clinton, Iowa. Clinton, okay. Yep, it's part of the Quad Cities. Yes, People yes. know Davenport, um, the bigger city. But um, it was a small town, Iowa, mm -hmm. um, about 35,000 people, so it's a small town. Okay, so your family, um, you, you, you're resettled. Yep, we resettled in Iowa for, for nine years. Um, and then when I was uh, going to my junior year of high school, my parents decided that they wanted to move our family to Minnesota because we were the only Hmong family in Clinton at this time. Mm. And uh, they felt like we w didn't know our relatives. They also were worried that they were getting older. Um, because back in Laos, the life expectancy was not that high. <laughs> it was in their mid-40s. And Ooh. so they were reaching 40, and they thought, okay, if we die, who's going to take care of our children? Um, we need to take them closer to the relatives. Such a strong culture and tradition mm -hmm. of yes. family. And yes, I it admire is. admire that. Yes, it is. So, so they moved us to Minnesota with a vibrant Hmong community that's here. Um, we moved to the east side of St. Paul, um, where we've been for the last 30 plus years. It's been a great area for us. Um, where, where'd you go to school? To Johnson High School, so I'm a governor. That, before that? Um, well, I, I came junior year of high school, so yes. I finished high school at um, 
at Johnson. Yeah, yeah. And then I went to Hamlin for my undergrad and then the University of Minnesota Law School for my law degree. Okay, and yes. uh, any uh, memories at Johnson you'd like to share? You mentioned you were a governor, the, mm -hmm. the Gavi, so. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, any memory? Uh, no, I have lots Johnson? of fond memories. I had lots of fond memories. I love my teachers there. Um, I was very involved in choir, in show choir, and in show musicals. Choir. Yep. So, okay. um, uh, and lots of great friends. I mean, I only spent two years there, but I felt like I was able to make connections and create yeah. community there. And you knew you wanted to go to college. Yes. And uh, then to Hamlin. Mm -hmm. Yes, I always knew I wanted to go to college because my father was a, a superintendent of schools in Longcheng, which is one of the largest city for Hmong people in okay. Laos. So. He was an educator, and he felt strongly that if Hmong people were to be successful in America, we had to go to school. We had to get our education. So he really pushed that in our family. Um, and luckily, he just had children that was able to take that advice, because education is hard. It's yeah. such a challenge. It's such a struggle to say get a high school diploma is easy to say, but actually going through and getting it, particularly if you're first generation, if you have students that have disabilities, if you have students that are um, from a, a different, if you're not an average normal student, yeah. high school is, getting an education yes. is hard. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, strong work ethic and uh, you know, the, your dad being superintendent, mm -hmm. he knows about the importance of yes, education yes. and that has inspired you mm -hmm. and uh, Ed Hamlin, what did you major in? Sure. Um, I majored in um, international relations and political science. Um, the idea of, of um, using um, policies to help people and then that's just from my background too, experience of being um, born in, in Asia, yes. being in Laos, coming to America, and the reason why it was here because it all boils down to politics yeah. um, and how politics can in, impact people and ideas and ideology, um, the struggle for um, uh, um, survival, yeah. I guess, uh, putting your best ideas out there. That's what I always think of political science. That's what I think of yeah. the legislature too. When people say politics, it's just putting your ideas out there because you yeah. want to build a better world. Um, ideas on how to uh, run government, ideas on education, ideas on, on anything. And having a public discourse for us um, to talk yeah. um, and then to come up with solutions. And so at, and at the end of the day, I think people like to well, people like to think that political politics divide us and politics is so hard, yes. but it's not. It's not. It boils down to it. It's just our ideas and talking to each other and figuring yeah. out the best way to move forward. And then after <laughs> Hamlin, you said yes. you're going to go to law school. Yes. And uh, why? Maybe on uh, what you just yes. said in uh -huh. terms of continuing those mm -hmm. ideals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I was interested in law because, again, policy. Uh, the Hmong community, um, we don't have a system, a legal system per se. Uh, we don't have what's called rule of law. We have um, uh, practices. Um, we have um, Custom, customs, usage, yep, and, and usage. Yeah. Um, so, and, and mediation. Yes. So, uh, my father is considered a clan elder. Mm -hmm. So, within our her clan. Um, he was often a mediator of family disputes and, and by her, problems. How many clans are there? Is it 16? Uh, or well, it's been identified in Minnesota that there's 18. 18. So people okay. like to refer to the Hmong as 18 clans. Okay. But worldwide, there are, I think, up to maybe 46, 47 different okay. clans. Yep. So the, the, mm -hmm. And it's just by last names. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the easy version. But within okay. a clan, there are so many sub-clans. Um, because the Hmong are then broken into white Hmong, green Hmong, black Hmong, striped Hmong. Um, and it's di di different re regions, different dialects, uh, different customs, um, different rules of law that um, each, each um, sub-clan follows. Okay. So then, um, and then different family lineage. So I happen to be white Hmong. Mm -hmm. Say there's Senator Her who's here. He's a <coughs> yes. Her too, but he and I belong to different clans. And so he's a green Hmong and he's different dialect, and so we are not <laughs> related at all. Okay. Um, but um, people see the same last name and they, they just assume that, you know, we're the same okay. family. We may be the same clan, 
overall, but different subclans within that okay. clan system. Mm -hmm. So you go to the University of Minnesota yes. Law School mm -hmm. and uh, graduate, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually you become a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and. and we're going to quickly yes, get yes. to your service then yes. as a board of regents yes. uh, for the university system, mm -hmm. not only just at the University of Minnesota, mm -hmm. but for the whole uh, system throughout yep. the state. Yes. But uh, what did you do then career-wise mm -hmm. after the Yes, yes after, the, uh, after I graduated from the law school, I uh, quit study for the bar, <laughs> passed the bar, yes. took the bar, uh, passed it. And so I'm very proud that I'm considered the first Hmong female to pass the Minnesota State Bar. Congratulations. Yeah, I <laughs> did that uh, 30 some years ago. Yes. But yes. it's very rigorous. Yes. There's a yes. lot of study and mm -hmm. uh, congratulations. Yes. And, yes. Uh, no, it, it, for me, it was a big feat, but I think also for the community. Because yes. being the first, and I, I said I never expected to be first because I came to America and started first grade. Yeah. So there were sisters and cousins that were much older than I was mm -hmm. and much smarter than I was. And I always assumed that I wouldn't be the first. Um, but again, you know, the, the whole ladder up education is it's really okay. hard. Um, so, um, so I did that and I clerked for one year with the Minnesota Supreme Court under Justice um, Esther Tamjanovic and Sandra Garderbeek. And they were wonderful female role models. And at oh, that yes. time, I just needed role models. Because again, going back to the Hmong community, we don't have lawyers. We yes. don't have that, this type of legal system. Yes. So um, I didn't have um, people that, I, that were close to me that could walk me through what being a lawyer was, what the legal system was. So having that one year time with them, I mean, great they really, mentors. yeah, great, great mentors. They yes. took me under their wings. But they just really showcased for me the love of policy yes. and the love of ideas and the exchange and the dialogue and the debate because, you know, they're a very deliberative body. There are yes. seven of them that sits on the, on the, the Supreme Court. They listen to uh, arguments um, on a particular issue and then they sit together yes. and they debate. Uh, about uh, what's the best policy to go forward, yes. what does the law mean. And that's the great thing I think about law too, is that today it can mean something, but tomorrow yeah. it can mean something else. And so we yes. could change the law, and it all depends on people agreeing with one another. Yeah. I mean, there are some values that we hold firm to, yes. but at the same time, law is flexible to fix uh, people's problems and yes. issues. So, so Again, I, that just really um, uh, crystallized for me yes. uh, my love of, of policy, my love of working as a public servant. Okay. And so then, um, you know, I, I looked for employment within the state of Minnesota, um, just to just to further that. Okay. And a yeah. couple of the roles that you've mm -hmm. been involved in, yes. I know you've won some awards <laughs> in your uh, yes. service, but yes. uh, maybe, maybe give us mm -hmm. an example of you know, mm -hmm. a key part of your career. Sure, yeah. So um, I did work for the state of Minnesota um, at then the Department of Employee Relations, yes. Office of Diversity and Equal Opportunity, and I did um, employment law, um, enforcing the state's affirmative action programs, hiring practices, um, looking at uh, creating great retention programs so that we can identify the talent, but we hire people and we keep people on, yes. um, and we um, um, promote people, um, and then we create an environment where everyone can be successful. So, um, and that's what we want. As an employer, we don't want to hire new people all the time. We yeah. want to keep the talent. Uh, we want to grow that talent. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we want to use that talent for, for us, right? Yes. I'm like, why give them to, to uh, uh, you know, another state or yeah. to another big company? Um, because uh, we need problem solvers in in, okay. in And in, in addition business. to the state, mm -hmm. you've yes. been in some other roles too? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I led the Council on Asian Pacific Minnesotans, which is a state agency. Yes. It's small, about five staff. Um, but Very active. I, yes, we're, but we're tasked to be advisors to the yes. governor and the legislature on issues pertaining to the Asian and Pacific American community throughout yes. the state of Minnesota. And that's what really, when in that role, it allowed me the opportunity to travel all over Minnesota to yes. meet communities where there were um, Asian Pacific American Islanders. And I traveled uh, northeast, northwest, southwest, southeast, central, all over Minnesota. Yeah. And I just found um, communities that were vibrant, communities that were struggling, 
-hmm. but also trying to find a way to live their best lives in Minnesota. Yeah. And it's that seeing that Minnesota answered that by offering opportunities yeah. um, and um, for a better life. And so because of that, it just solidified my love of service, my love of Minnesota, what a great state it is, what a great place of opportunity. Challenges are there for sure. Okay. But the thing is that people are willing to acknowledge those challenges and yeah. to come together and work on them. And <laughs> now that you're a regent, yes. you might want to mention, there, there's a lot of campaigning, actually. <laughs> uh, you yes, are selected yes. by the legislature. Yes. There's 201, mm -hmm. the House and the Senate get together mm -hmm. and vote mm -hmm. on it, but there's a great deal of uh, screening that yes, goes on yes. where you meet with this group and that group, yes. and it's a very uh, strigor, vig vigorous, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say stressful, but it is stressful. It is stressful. It is stressful. <laughs> it is stressful. <laughs> but uh, you went through that whole process. I did. And uh, <laughs> you survived and I did, did very well. I did. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, it is a very vigorous process, and I always joke, had I known, I wouldn't have done it or would have thought more seriously about it, because I'm kind of... My friends think that I'm kind of, kind of a Pollyanna, where I'm thinking, oh, this problem, there's a problem. It needs, it needs fixing, or I've got an idea, so I'm going to throw it out there. And, you know, uh, I like, I'm the half glass, half full kind of person mm -hmm. versus half empty. So, um, yeah. about the, yes, the process, the election process, um, I think it's, was a hard process. Um, it was a needed process and a necessary process because that just shows me that people love the institution, love yes. the university system. Uh, we um, we uh, dedicate a lot of funding to it, a lot of resources and a lot of hope in yes. it that it would be the place that would uh, educate the brightest minds, would create the brightest mind, that would be problem, um, that would be that will be driven to solve problems and mm -hmm. that will make our state bigger and better. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of hope um, in the school. There's a lot of promise in the school. And will those hope and promises be realized? I think that's the job up to the Board of Regents. And so I think legislators take that very seriously because yeah. it's your responsibility to elect. But I always say, you guys are a hard group to to sell ourselves to because you worked really hard to get elected <laughs> and then you know what the process is. Yeah. Um, and so we have to win uh, your vote. So it's it's double layered because you guys are elected officials. You know yeah. how important a vote is. You know how to win a vote. Yeah. And we are normal people, not politicians, um, coming into the process, working with professional, yeah, I pro guess we professional are electioners. <laughs> and so so it, it, it was a learning curve, uh, yeah. but I think you just have to be open and you yeah. just ask, to ask, ask for help. And you know, I was very open. When I met yes. with legislators, I asked, you know, what do I need to do? Uh, give me some advice on how, I don't, I don't want to give you the answers that you're looking for, yeah. but help me to think, you know, what are the best solutions? Help me to think about uh, how I can be the best um, yeah. regent I can and be. What mm -hmm. will be your top priority as regent? Yes. Um, I think, well, I have three, and they're, they're okay. all in line. Okay. One is that I definitely want the university to, access, to be accessible, mm -hmm. and uh, accessible to who, right? And I'm really working towards the middle class. Um, because I think um, there are plenty, there are not plenty, there's, there's some aid out there available to help students that are needy and yep. poor. Um, and then there are the ones that can afford to go, yep. um, the rich. Uh, but then there's a middle class that, that are the debt, yep. uh, the burden is yes. just so much on them. And I want to lessen that. Good. So accessibility and affordability go hand in hand. Um, we want the university to be a place where people can go to. Uh, but then also be able to afford. Yes. And then the third part out of that is that you got in. You were you able to, to pay for it, whether through loans, work, um, grants, scholarships. You got that. What are you going to do with your degree? So the third yeah. one is really about uh, placement and yes. accountability. Um, that um, that we, we not only educate them, but we get them ready for the profession and that they are actually placed mm -hmm. um, and working so that we utilize, so we build their brains, but we also utilize their brains. So those are, you know, those are my three priorities. And 
we're making great efforts in all three areas, but there definitely are rooms for improvement. Good. Well, you'll have a new president. Yes. Uh, it's a, a, in a transition. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the public wishes you well, the, particularly the, the legislature. Mm -hmm. And uh, we encourage people to get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's any suggestions, uh, guidance that they'd like to give you. I'm sure you're open to that. No, I'm definitely open. I'm someone who loves advice um, yes. and take advice. Um, and I'm the first one to say I don't have all the answers, but I'm willing to ask the questions. So yes. please. Uh, I know you will. Yes, please uh, give me uh, ideas that you have. Um, Is there a, a contact have? number? I mean, you gave mm -hmm. us a contact number before. Mm -hmm. Yes. But and uh, it's my cell phone and okay. it's available to anyone and I'm, As I mine. openly share it. Yep. So it's 651-503-6817 and you're more than welcome to uh, call, text, leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I am able to. Yeah. Great. So yes. in addition to your responsibilities uh, serving on the Board of Regents, uh, which is Primarily volunteer, it and, is, and I don't think people is. realize that. I mean, you, they pay for your parking and some of the expenses. That's a mm -hmm. very prestigious honor, one of the highest honors we have. But uh, you know, tell us you know just about the you know the rest of your life uh, mm -hmm. and how you, you know and any hobbies that you have. So <laughs> yes. and then you live in Maplewood. Uh, yes, a little yes. bit about that. Yes, yes, I live in Maplewood, and my family and I we own a business in St. Paul, um, which is just a couple minutes north of here on mm -hmm. Rice Street. It's an adult day center, and we have about um, 85 Hmong elders mm -hmm. um, that come to stay with us during the day. And we offer programming, we offer m meals, exercise, uh, but we all focus Great. on their health and their health status. Mm -hmm. So that's you know that's what I do in my day job. But I also love to read. I love to knit. I I'm learning how to do uh, the traditional Hmong needlework. It's called okay. Pandao with my elders because they have so much uh, information and knowledge. Uh, but I also love Hmong art and Hmong culture, mm -hmm. and so I spend a lot of my time volunteering um, with Hmong Museum and trying to, you know, make sure that th there is a place in Minnesota that captures the the history uh, and that captures um, what Hmong people are doing now for future generations. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Um, well, we wish you the best in that, and uh, again, I encourage people to contact you if mm -hmm. they have yes. questions. Yes. We congratulate you, the legislature, for the new role that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, we wish you the very best, and again, I remind the viewers to get a hold of you mm -hmm. if they'd like to uh, share any ideas, mm -hmm. concerns, because I know that uh, you are very eager to mm -hmm. learn as much as you can. Uh, and that number again is 651-503-6817. Yes. So, uh, Regent Hur, thank you very no, much for you, joining Wigger. us. Thank you, for the invitation. And we wish you continued success. <laughs> yes. And uh, a very inspiring story okay. that you've shared with us. Right, thank and we're you. so happy you're a part of our community. Yes, I am too. Thank you, sir. And uh, we wish the best to Regent Her. And if there's questions, please get a hold of her. Uh, I also suggest you, you call me if I can be of help. My cell phone is 651-770-0283. Thank you very much for watching and for the honor of representing you.